So let's go here to Angel. And he says, the AFC North's going to be wild. I'm actually going to go with the Ravens winning the AFC North with the Bengals as one of the AFC wild cards. If they can't protect Joe Burrow, Baltimore is going to win the division. You know, Joe Burrow's had two major injuries in the course of his career already. Joe Burrow is the reason the Bengals are not the Bumbles. Uh, but he can't take the kind of hits and the kind of sacks that he has taken virtually every year. Does the left tackle Orlando Brown make a difference? Probably. But I just, I just don't know they can keep him upright because I don't like the rest of that offensive line. And Angel, you and I sign the same memo. I mean, I think the addition of OBJ, Odell Beckham Jr., and Aguilar, who came from the Raiders, I mean, that's big play down the field productivity to go with the three kid receivers they have and Lamar's ability to move the pocket and run the football. I, I think the Ravens' personality mm. is going to be drastically different on offense than it, it has been during the whole Lamar Jackson era because it used to be three running backs, Lamar scramble, and then throw to the tight end, Mark Andrews. It's going to be different. Angel, thanks for joining us on Fans Forum. Yeah, I think it's interesting because – We've always known Lamar Jackson's this great talent, but the Ravens have never advanced deep in the playoffs, at mm -hmm. least recently. So maybe now they got the pieces to do it. Firepower. They got firepower. Those, I mean, OBJ makes, I think, a massive difference uh, to their offensive playbook. Next question. Okay, here, let's go to Chris. And he says, hey, Hacksaw, what do you think of the 49ers and Brock Purdy? Well, we just talked about it extensively. Uh, you know, as a starting quarterback, you got to take a lot of snaps in practice. And he's coming off the brace surgery in his elbow. So that probably means maybe he has off days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, somewhere in that week to prepare. Because I just don't think a quarterback who's coming off elbow surgery can throw 70 passes in practice in three days, getting ready for the next game, and then playing a game where he's going to take some hits, et cetera. That's my only concern. But as John alluded to, Sam Darnold surrounded by good players, Mm -hmm. maybe a different than Sam Darnold in Carolina who didn't have a lot of good people around him and with the Jets and got overwhelmed by the experience. So, you know, that, that could be a good insurance policy, but you're playing San Francisco. It's going to be like a street fight. That's who they are. Well, what, what are you hearing through the grapevine? Why did the Niners cut Trey Lance or trade him? Well, I, I think it was wrong. I think they should have developed him. He only played four games. He had two significant injuries in two years. You know, how can you gauge anything? And they paid such a steep price. Keep him as your third quarterback. Yeah. Granted, they got some cap space when they moved him out. Keep him, develop him. Because of the injury history, especially in San Francisco, has been pretty significant. But they just gave up on him. Maybe they just wanted to move him off because they had to sign Bosa and they created all this cap space. They redid a couple of other contracts so they could get Bosa done. They rid themselves, I think, of $5.5 million in cap space. I wouldn't have done it, but they did it. So hopefully Brock Purdy doesn't break down. Yeah, let's hope not. I mean, we imagine they had all those quarterbacks last year yeah. and now suddenly they've really kind of turned the page on it. Let's move it on. Let's go to Dale. He says, Chargers will destroy the Miami Dolphins on Sunday. I, I think it's going to be wild. This is going to be a new offense, big time tempo. Tua, you know, Tua is going to try to dictate where they're going with the ball down the field and get the ball out. If the Chargers and do the Chargers have enough pass rush? I mean, it's it's a burning question. I have no doubt the Bolts are going to go down the field with Kellen Moore. I'm be fascinated to see what happens at 125 on Sunday afternoon. I think the Chargers can win this game, but the Chargers have questions in their secondary. And if if Tua's new look offense, which is three steps, boom out of there. And if they can't cover in the secondary, J.C. Jackson can't be what he used to be in New England, then the Chargers are in trouble because all they got are a lot of kids beneath him on the depth chart. I, I think the Bolts have the ability to have a really good season. And their schedule is really tough. I, I, I went through the schedule this morning, and I, I think we're looking at 10-7 and 7 or 11-6. and 6. But that being said, the back end of the schedule last five weeks is really vicious. And who knows how many guys will be healthy by the time we get to November playing in, into December. Your thoughts on the Bolts? It's going to be fun to watch them. You keep saying they're as, going to be as good as Rivers, Tomlinson, and Gates. Maybe, dare we say it, as as good as you know Fouts and Winslow and, and Joyner and that, that whole cast of, of all-stars. Uh, so they're going to be interesting. But, you know, when you see a game, Miami, 
San Diego, we're going to see video highlights of Kellen Winslow oh, being yeah. taken Flashback. off the field. Yeah, you can count on that. So, I don't know. As far as Miami goes, two is an interesting guy. When he plays, he looks really good. But, boy, he got knocked around a lot of those concussions. Well, he got hurt at Alabama twice. Mm -hmm. And then, obviously, he had the two concussions. But he spent the summer with Michael Vick as a tutor. Oh, cool. And Michael Vick and he talked about the fact you got to be able to stay on the field for the next play. So don't run the damn ball. And he ran it a lot. Yeah. And Tua ran it a lot. And Tua paid a terrible price with the hits. But if, if this tempo offense that I've been told exists and it's shotgun balls out, then you're not he's not going to expose himself to hits. He's got to go through his progressions. But if it's fast tempo, then the Chargers are going to have their hands full because are they going to run out of gas because the tempo of what Miami's running – Fun game Sunday. We'll see what happens Sunday and at 125. Maybe Tua's the next lefty Dan Marino with a quick release, right? Could well be. Could On we go. Uh, let's go to John. And he says, no one is beating Kansas City except maybe injuries. As for Aaron Rodgers, well, the Jets got the guy he replaced in Green Bay. How did that work out? Well, let, let's just see what, what Aaron has around him. I mean, I, I look at depth charts and I say, these guys can play. And he's now too deep at running back. Um, Brees Hall can run it and he can catch it. Ezekiel will pound it. Um, the, to me, the offensive front is the big issue because they lost four offensive tackles, Sean, last year with injuries. Now they're all back and they've repositioned some of them so that maybe they think the Jets have enough. And it's Aaron Rodgers, and Aaron Rodgers is different than it would be from the guys who were masquerading last year. Can I be a starting quarterback in the league? And I'm panic stricken. And I mean, this is Aaron Rodgers we're talking about. And he'll get the ball out and he'll move the pocket. And he'll make some plays with some of his veteran receivers that he brought with him from Green Bay. So fascinating. Although that first game, Jets Buffalo. Wow. Ooh, that's going to be a good one. Where, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is it going to be in the Meadowlands or in Buffalo? Uh, it's in the Meadowlands. Okay. Well, this will be a great debut for Aaron Rodgers. Monday Night Football. Let's move on here and let's go to Ben. And he says, hey, what's your thoughts on the Packers? Well, we talked about it. Jordan Love's turn. But sorry in advance up in Green Bay. She says, uh, what you have at quarterback is not what you used to have. Not with AR and not with Favre prior to that. Um, I worry about the offensive line. They just have had a history of injuries, you know, and they don't have the significant players at wide receiver as young as they are at quarterback. They're going to be young at wide receiver. They got the kid out of is it Wyoming or Nevada, Romeo dubs hmm. who had a good rookie season, big six, four lanky guy, but he's young. I mean, all their guys are young. Uh, you know, unless they surprise us and just pound the football with Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, and maybe they do that to take the pressure off the kid. But the kid's been there three years. So now we have to find out whether Jordan Love is the right guy. Yeah, so we're going to find out. I mean, it's the Packers are always going to be good. You can count on that. Let's go here to Manny. He says, well, this is kind of a layup question. Who is the biggest threat to Kansas City and the AFC? Justin Herbert, period, exclamation point, yeah. end of conversation. Mm -hmm. But... The big problem is the Bolts' defense is not equal to the Kansas City defense when Chris Jones is there. In Kansas City, I'll say this, the one thing they've done the last two years is they've drafted a lot of guys. They rebuilt their pass rushers on the edge. they got the one kid out of Purdue, and they got another defensive end last year. And I, I think that's a really good group, and they are so much more athletic on the back seven. And by the way, they, they got the Charger linebacker, who I think is really intelligent, and Drew Tranquil. So, uh, but until the Chargers prove that they can play much better defense, I still think Kansas City is the team to beat. But the Bolts will be right there at the door knocking. Yeah, I think so. I mean, but if you're looking at the top teams in the AFC, they seem so much better than the top teams in the NFC. A lot more firepower, I think. Yeah, I think so too. But if you're looking at, do you think Kansas City, I mean, they, they're the heir apparent. To, they won the Super Bowl, obviously, but they're, are they still the more dominant team over, say, Buffalo and Cincinnati? Oh, Buffalo has to prove it. Kansas mm -hmm. City's been there multiple, multiple times. There's a big difference between Josh Allen's one-loss record and Patrick Mahomes, 64 and 16, even if your life, wife doesn't like him. So <laughs> I, I, I'm, I, there's no doubt there's a lot of explosive stuff offensively in the AFC compared to the NFC. And the elite in the NFC is Philadelphia. So a lot of people of the opinion, Kansas City, versus 49ers or Philadelphia. Now, a lot has to happen over the next 18 weeks of the NFL season. Move on. Moving on. Let's go so, to get some social media comments. 
Uh, this is from uh, Don and talking about the, the Chargers. He says, I blame injuries, Lombardi being a trash can, lazy tackling. Well, a lot of injuries. I mean, offensive line was an absolute mess. Defensive line lost virtually all their inside tackles. Um, they've, they've kind of rid themselves of what few veterans they had back there as insurance policies because they think young guys like JT Webb and a few of these other kids are now ready to play. Asante Samuel is kind of hit and miss. He makes a lot of plays defensively, and then he gets beat. Uh, Michael Davis at the corner, just a very erratic career. Last year had a breakout season like a light bulb went on. You're going to have to duplicate that again. And they paid, I think it was $83 million to get J.C. Jackson. And I went back and I looked at video of him with New England, and he was really something. Single coverage, man up, making plays as an athlete. Last year, he looked lost. He made no plays, and then he got hurt. Now, he's walking around up in Carson with a lot of bravado. I can play, and I'm healthy. Well, patella tendon surgery, we'll see if you hold up. And then secondly, if you hold up, are you going to make plays? Because he didn't make any last season, and then the knee exploded on him. If, if he can be what he used to be, but the defense was so different in L.A. with the Bolts as compared to what it was what he played in New England in terms of press coverage and what they mandated to do, and he just kind of looked lost out there. Well, do you think the Chargers are going to make a big step forward this year? I mean, do you, th- you see them going deep in the playoffs? Oh, yeah. They better go deep in the playoffs because mm-hmm. this is the last time we're going to see this roster. John, they have, according to one of the salary cap experts, they're 80 million over the salary cap next season. 80? 80. 80. Well, because of Herbert's 50 million contract, right? plus everybody, all those receivers and those pass rushers are making 30 million each against the cap. So it has to happen now because this is the last time I think this group is going to be together. Somebody's vacating at the end of the year. It's either Keenan Allen or Mike Williams or maybe Khalil Mack, or maybe two of them are going to have to leave because they're so far above the salary cap. Mm. Yeah. So we'll, this will, they got to win it this year. Exactly. Okay. So let's move on here. We got one comment here about the chiefs and Chris Jones. This is from Michael. He says, Chris Jones doesn't want to be in Kansas city. He wouldn't put forth the effort. Even if he did sign trade him and get what you can. I don't think so. Do you know where Chris Jones is going to be a kickoff tonight? He's going to be in the owner's box, Lamar Hunt's box, Clark wow. Hunt's box at Arrowhead stadium. They're going to get this done. It's just moving dollars around and what's the guarantee and what kind of bonuses are there. I think they'll get it done because it's too late in the equation for him to go anywhere else. And anybody that would trade for him would then inherit whatever his contractual demands might be of $30 million per season. But he'll be there and they'll get it done. And so I I totally disagree with, with the statement, Mike, that uh, he doesn't care. He wants to be paid. And when you look at his productivity the last couple of years, he's such a stud inside defensively. He's one of the fastest, quote, defensive tackles for a big guy as there is in the league. So they'll get it done after kickoff tonight. Well, imagine if the Chiefs struggle defensively. Then they'll probably get it done real quick because they'll need him back. Um, But, you know, we were talking about how Chris Jones needed to be paid, and so did Nick Bosa with the Niners. But you said Bosa re-signed, right? Yeah, Bosa got his money. He got all the money. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's absolutely amazing the kind of money. He got $122 million guaranteed. His base salary, his average salary is now the highest in the NFL at $34.5 million of any defensive player on wow. the planet. So they took care of him. And obviously now in retrospect, in the rearview mirror, moving Trey Lance was part of that equation to free up a chunk of money. And they took one of their tackles and they restructured his deal to clear almost 30 million cap space. So, I mean, they had to move money around. They got the deal done. Who do you think is the better player? Chris Jones, Nick Bosa, or Joey Bosa? Oh, Nick Bosa for sure. Oh, really? But again, they're very different people. Mm -hmm. Nick is better than Joey Mm -hmm. because Nick can play the run. Joey can't. Uh, Chris Jones is just a different beast, and he plays inside a defensive tackle. Mm. But if you match big man versus big man, there's nobody like Chris Jones in the NFL inside at tackle. I mean, his ability to slug with people and get off double teams and make penetration and reach and grab. But Bose is a complete football player. Holy cow. He's just, he's (laughs) better of the two Boses. He's the better one. Okay. Let's move on here. We got, uh, here's one talking about Ezekiel Elliott. This is from fat Sal. He says, 
Elliot, Elliot is dust. Thought he was going to be Emmett. Well, he did well. He had eight really good seasons. And he's not, I don't think he's used up. He had a knee problem last year. He's only 28 years of age. He had eight rugged seasons. But how many, how many Emmett Smiths are there on the planet? I mean, he was maybe the, the exception to the rule. But for the role they want to run out of that backfield, to keep defenses honest, he's going to help Aaron Rodgers a great deal because that's proven commodity. And the other kid they drafted out of Iowa State last year, Brees Hall was having a phenomenal statistical season on a bad team till he went down. Now he is back. So in essence, you got Zeke running inside, Brees Hall darting and dashing outside, Hall catching passes out of the backfield. And then obviously this, this cadre of wide receivers that Aaron Rodgers has got to throw to, now led by his Packer teammate Alan Lazard and the old dog, Randall Cobb. So I, I think the Jets are going to be fun. And Aaron Rodgers is such a difference maker. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for the next like Aaron Rodgers statement that's going to throw Twitter off, you know, because you can always count on that. But it's interesting too. I, we've talked about this how the running backs, you know, they just kind of churn. You know, they they once they get to around 29 or 30, they they jettison them off the roster or they end up somewhere else as a backup. So Elliot's in that group. Yeah. Shall be fun going forward. Hey, listen, we hope you have enjoyed our NFL preview. Couple of 